Welcome, everyone. My name is uh, Kia Vashnajafi. I'm Director of Policy and Communications. Thank you for taking the time to join our webinar today. I'm joined by your president, Debbie Davio, and Rishar Bole, the Director of uh, National Labor Relations. And before we start, Debbie is wearing a pink shirt, and would you like to tell us why? Yeah, for sure. Uh, by the way, if it looks red on your screen, you should adjust just your color. This is your color check. Um, but today is uh, Pink Shirt Day, and so in recognition uh, and in support of um, diverse genders within Canada, I'm wearing my pink shirt day and my pink shirt on International Pink Shirt Day today. Great, thanks, Debbie. Um, so throughout the webinar, you can click on the chat icon at the bottom of the screen to ask a question. Um, uh, in today's session, we will provide an overview of our central table negotiations and we'll begin with a presentation from Debbie and Richard uh, and uh, wrap up with questions from our members from you. Uh, before we delve into the details of the negotiation, Debbie, could you tell us a bit uh, about the central bargaining uh, and the Do Better campaign in support of our central bargaining demands? Sure can. Um, as you all know, our central bargaining campaign uh, and process has been underway since January of this year. Uh, and our goal, of course, is to get the best possible deal we can before the upcoming federal elections. Uh, as, you, as you probably know, the government goes into caretaker mode during elections, so it's really important we get this work done. Um, so our priorities um, are really focused. We want to protect members from future pay issues. Uh, of course, we want to improve family uh, leave for members and we want to strengthen the anti-harassment measures in our collective agreement so that we can finally address some of those um, issues. Uh, our central bargaining team consists of members from many of our occupational groups and our priorities are based on a bargaining survey that we sent out to all of our members uh, of various groups. And central bargaining is really an effective way for us to negotiate um, common language to common issues and that language will, will um, you know, once successful, would be included in each of our group's collective agreements. Um, the campaign that we're running is also a great tool to connect with members who have not been engaged with the union. Of course, collective bargaining is really at the heart of what we do for you, and uh, it hopefully will help us build the next generation of activists. Great, thanks, Debbie. Um, it's an exciting campaign, and Debbie will uh, get into some of the uh, details of the actions that the members have taken closer to the end of the uh, the end of the webinar. But could you break down the political context that we're navigating right now? For sure. Well, right now uh, we're seven months away from the next federal election, and I think we're all pretty aware of what's going on in the headlines. Uh, add to that the upcoming results of some provisional elections in Alberta and Saskatchewan, and we've got a pretty volatile climate that we have to work in to get this all done. Um, you know, of course, we're also seeing that the Conservatives are leading in the polls for the last month. They're, in fact, just short of being in a majority uh, position and coming up into the next election. And we just think that it's in all of our strategic interests to get the best deal possible this summer before uh, all bets are off as to what's going to happen with bargaining. Great. And I uh, assume that's why the Do Better campaign is so key to uh, showing strength among our members. For sure. Uh, especially during the negotiations process, it's really, really important um, that the employer sees our strength and our solidarity uh, as a union. And, you know, we are 60,000 strong. So it's really important that we take advantage of that strength. Um, and so obviously, um, through the Do Better campaign, we want to make sure that the employer feels pressure um, to do the right thing, to do better at the bargaining table. Um, why do better? I've noticed that it's, it also resonates with some of the language that the prime minister, as you know, the, the political leader of the employer, <laughs> uses. For sure. You know, um, he, Justin Trudeau has been saying um, since 2015 that this is Canada, and in Canada we can better is always possible, and we totally agree with that sentiment. Better is always possible, and so we just feel, uh, especially now in the context of Phoenix and everything else we're facing as public servants, in light of our, our continued commitment, that it's really time for the government to, to do better. Okay, perfect. Um, Rashad, let's get into the nitty-gritty of uh, the bargaining efforts and, and what we're fighting for at the table. Um, what kind of pay protections are we fighting for? So, Always based on the fact that the, you, the members, and we all deserve pay and pay protection 
And we also deserve a pay increase that reflects the real cost of living. At the central table right now, uh, we're pushing for a fixed payday. We don't have a fixed payday in the collective agreement. That's quite unusual. Transparent pay stops, a clear time frame for all payment, uh, and deduction rules for overpayment. We see recently the news what the impact of those overpayment rules, and retro pay on a separate pay stop. This measure will help us from a repeat of Phoenix and provide pay protection right now while we are dealing with the Phoenix mess. Thanks, Risha. Um, I know that we're also fighting for stronger anti-harassment measures uh, at the table. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, it is important for all of us to understand how pervasive the issue of harassment is in the public service. Uh, we know that 15% of public servants reported harassment at work in the last two years and did not file a complaint. This is very serious. So we want the employer to commit to creating an inclusive and respectful workplace free from violence, harassment, and discrimination. From there, we are pushing for harassment prevention training, access to voluntary mediation, and effective harassment investigations. And also, everyone deserves a safe and a healthy workplace. Definitely. Um, another central bargaining priority is improved family leave. Um, as a new parent myself, I really understand how important these options are. Um, what are our asks here, Richard? The, the reality is Canadians expect the federal government to be a model employer in this area. It is essential uh, to be able to give our best in the workplace and to our family. At the central table right now, we are pushing for improved parental and maternity leave, paid critical and compassionate leaves, as well as domestic violence leave. It is important that we have the leave we need to take care of ourselves and our family. Also, gender neutral language must be used to ensure leave provisions include and respect all parents. The employer must ensure that all parents biological, adoptive, birthing, non-birthing, receive fair leave. We are also fighting to remove the obligation to repay your top up to ensure and ensure parental leave matches employment insurance legislation, including the recent increase to 18 months total leave. Great. Um, Debbie, I know that uh, parental leave uh, is one of the reasons why um, you got more involved uh, in the union. Um, do you want to tell us just briefly the story that you shared with the, with the members through an email a little while ago? For sure. Uh, in 2001, I was pregnant with my uh, last child, uh, Jesse, who's now 18, so hopefully I don't age myself too much. Uh, but um, that was the year that the EI legislation was extended from six months of leave to 12 months of leave. And at the time, our collective agreement didn't specify a time period. It just specified that we should receive top up for the period we were eligible for EI. So, of course, uh, when the new EI legislation came in, I expected to receive top up for the full 12 months. Uh, and, um, you know, my son's father was also a public servant, so it was a question for him as well. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, pay and compensation people had not received specific directives on this and were not going to pay my top up. And as I went to complain day after day, finally, uh, the, the compensation lady said to me, Debbie, you know, you're not the only pregnant woman in the department. And I said, yes, uh, I know this, Gail, but um, mark my words, I will have my top up. Um, and, and hopefully uh, that will apply to everybody else. So um, I was successful. I was able to, I was thankful because I was working in a department that actually develops EI policy. So I was able to make the linkages and alas, uh, I did receive my top up as did everyone else. So. Uh, of course, the language has changed since then. I guess the government wisened up a bit, put a limit on it, and now we need to uh, work um, that limit to correct the problem that uh, that it creates. Exactly. Um, we, um, when you sent that email to the members and asked for members to share their stories, um, uh, close to 188 members wrote back uh, sharing their stories, and you know our team has had a chance to review those. Um, really, it it reinforces the value of everything we're fighting for at the table. It's, uh, you know, for me, it was such a wake up call in the 
challenges that members are facing, whether they're dealing with um, you know, uh, spouses and partners who are facing illnesses, uh, the health of their children, uh, parental leave situations. So it's really, you know, it, it strengthened my passion for the work yeah. that we're doing. And well, I, and truthfully, I I've been hearing some of those stories on the road too, um, in particular, uh, you know, we're kind of in a purgatory phase on this parental leave because although the legislation enables the 18 months, our collective agreements, uh, the wording um, doesn't really permit it. And so the government's having to do all kinds of workarounds just to provide this additional six months. And that situation cannot be sustained for very long. So really important we correct these issues. Perfect. Let's go to the questions from the members. The first question uh, is on Phoenix. And the member asks, how long will it take to have a new pay system to replace Phoenix? Do you think the government has allocated enough resources for this process? Uh, so thankfully, the government introduced a brand new, uh, what they're calling agile procurement process for um, the purchase of the new system. You know that we had advocated quite hard for that um, commitment. And um, thankfully, we are able to work with the government, with the Treasury Board on this project. So we're pretty in the know. We feel very confident about the transparency of the process. We understand it's um, going a lot more quickly than your typical procurement, which can last, you know, I think with Phoenix, five to seven years, just the procurement cycle. Uh, they um, just started uh, last um, fall and they expect to be completed, uh, I believe, sometime this month and we'll be in a position to make recommendations to cabinet on a replacement system or systems that can replace Phoenix. Of course, um, some of those solutions will be uh, quicker, you know, and it'll we'll, we'll get um, people paid faster, and others, when it means implementing a full new system, could still take, uh, you know, in the in the three year range if we're really focused and effective. Um, remembering that we don't want to rush into a new system before making sure it's properly tested, piloted, and it works properly, and so we're balancing. Um, speed with making sure we get a system that works 100% paying, paying members and that's a little bit of, uh, of a challenge but uh, suffice it to say that we're going as quick as humanly possible and I believe the government is committed to that as well. Great. Um, before we go to the next question, just wanted to repeat that if you have a question uh, that you want to ask to uh, Debbie or Rashar, uh, please click on the chat button on your screen and you can pose your, post your question there uh, and we will be reading it uh, uh, here and Debbie will be uh, answering them. Uh, the next question the member asks, is there a plan for improvements to the five days of family leave employees currently get annually? Yes, right now we are pushing at the central table to improve all the parental leave related to uh, paternity, maternity, parental, that old question. But also at many of the specific tables, they are pushing to add leave for family uh, reason. Like currently, most of the collective reasons have five days, some have six days. So we're trying to push everyone higher uh, for the in the current round. So it's happening at all the table right now. We did also, uh, uh, I might add, as part of the EWSP uh, discussions we're having, uh, and in the MOU we had established in the last round for those discussions, we also added uh, a family day. So if we get to the, the conclusion of those discussions, I believe that that also will um, increase the quantum of family days. Perfect, great. Um, so again, if you have a question, please press the chat button on your screen and you can post your question there. Uh, next question, the member asks, I am fairly new to PIPs and I was wondering why members need to sign the Do Better Pledge. Uh, well, as we sort of specified uh, a little bit earlier, uh, we're just better together. Uh, the more we are, the, the more we show interest in the work of the union on behalf of all the members, the better our chances at success. And so, uh, you know, in, in our campaigns where we have a really broad engagement from our members, that demonstrates to government that our members are behind us and they're behind our bargaining teams, and it really just puts us in a position to succeed on your behalf. Great. I, I'm just waiting for another question to be posted, but uh, in the meantime, I wanted to um, uh, give Debbie the opportunity to tell us a little bit about 
how many of our members have already taken action in the uh, in support of the Do Better campaign? Uh, for sure. You know what? Uh, as we just said, your active engagement is, is essential and we're pretty proud because at this point over 5,000 of our members have um, signed the Do Better pledge and so keep them coming. In fact, um, over 300 activists have been trained up for this campaign. So we're really, really pleased with your ongoing level of engagement. And if you look in the chat box, you'll find a link um, so you can click right through now to add your name to the uh, to the pledge and uh, just takes a couple of seconds of your time. And that, of course, shows support and solidarity with the bargaining team. Uh, it also helps to keep you informed on uh, other actions that you can take to support this campaign. And remember, we're trying to get this thing done by the summer. So yeah. we're talking about a couple of months of your deep engagement to put us in a position to win on your behalf so hoping that you will uh, take this step for Perfect. Us. Well speaking of that the next yeah. question uh, member asks that with regards to the central bargaining and with the looming election do you feel an agreement can be reached uh, in the near future as in before the election uh, and if not what is the reasonable expectation post election? So uh, this is a really great question because it is at the core of the bargaining strategy that our groups have established. And so our uh, strategic bargaining committee, where all of our groups are represented, uh, have decided that it's in our best interest strategically to try to get to a deal under this government, which um, for all intents and purposes means getting there before the summer because uh, some time will be required for this uh, stuff to go through cabinet and before the writ is dropped and so when I say summer I mean like early summer mm -hmm. and so uh, of course uh, it is a sort of big goal we've set for ourselves and uh, and we are optimistic but we're also not um, completely seeing the world through rose-colored glasses we've had a number of changes in the Minister of the Treasury Board over the past little while and those things all factor into our expectations. But I guess the simple answer is yes, we, we truly hope that we will get to a deal uh, before the election. And if we don't, um, then we're really looking at, at minimum, a stall of about six months while the election process goes through and um, finalizes. Uh, and if, uh, if there's a new government, so we're no longer dealing with the government we started this round with, then it is essentially a redo. So mm -hmm. everything starts over under a new government and then no telling how long it could take, uh, not knowing what kind of government we may be facing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thanks for that. The next question the member um, uh, has posed is, is there something at the central table above short-term security? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Richard take that on. It's quite a technical question, but uh, it probably has a little political element too. So why don't you start, Richard? Yes, on the uh, short term tick leave, as you all remember, in 2016, we agree uh, to put in place through a MOA a process with the government to change the current sick leave re regime. So we've worked for the last two years very thoroughly to get through that process. Uh, we are not there yet we're pretty close to conclude those discussions with treasury board and the government so there's nothing in that round mm -hmm. it's still the moa that was signed in 2016 that is, will remain applicable uh so there's no discussion per, per se the central table it's all taken care at the treasury board level with debbie at the steering committee myself technical committee to go to recreate the new system for short-term disability for our members yeah and so i uh, sorry not to i just want to be um clear on the terms um what we're attempting to do is modernizing the existing sick leave regime so it, re it would remain in our collective agreement it would remain internal to the federal government not provided for by a third party um, provider. And so a lot of the conditions we set for ourselves at the start of this had been met, which is why we uh, ventured into these discussions. And um, the fact that we were having a group of our members that were falling very deeply into the, uh, into the gap 
uh, that was existing in the old system. And so we're, um, we're really pleased with the work that we've done there. Uh, and we will be coming out to the members to ratify uh, any agreement, much like we do with collective bargaining. But we're going to do that separately so that we're not um, c confusing the two uh, issues or sort of asking members to trade off something in one for something in the other. And so we'll do that process separately and include that uh, in the collective agreement afterwards. Great. Um, for members who would be interested on our website, pips.ca, if you search for EWSB, that's Employee Wellness and Support and Plan, support plan uh, there is a uh, presentation, a couple of the members from the steering uh, committee, I believe, uh, put together that goes through a, a number of scenarios. Um, it was quite a learning experience for me when I heard what the difference would be under the plan that we're negotiating, and it's very progressive and, um, and you know responsive to the needs of our uh, to the evolving needs of our members. Yeah. Um, to go to the next uh, question, uh, a member has asked uh, for uh, clarification on what we're proposing uh, on parental leave and math leave in particular. Do you want to so as sure? for the maternity leave, there's no change. It's the current weeks that the new uh, birthing parent uh, have. There's no change. What we're really focusing on is the fact that now with the EI change, uh, you're able to have access to up to 61 weeks of parental leave. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are focusing to make sure that those 61 weeks, they will be a top up. We want to make sure also that it's, there is no impact because currently after one year of absence, you have to pay for the benefits, for the pension, and all those, those rates are changing. So we want to expand those protections to the extended parental leave. That's really the, the, the fight we're having right now in the discussion in how to uh, do that. So that's the discussion. And for those of you who want to just go to the website, also on the central table, all the proposal we made, initial proposal, are on the website on the other negotiations. If you want to read in the details, uh, as well uh, as the employer's proposals, as yeah. well as the employer okay. answer. So that could be a more detailed explanation on our website. Yeah, yeah, and you know, as I as I mentioned earlier, I have been hearing a lot from our members who are stuck in this gap right now, mm -hmm. where uh, they want to take advantage of the additional six months of leave. However, uh, our collective agreement is not clear on how that's to be yeah. handled and so they're being asked to take it in all different ways mm -hmm. which require them to pay a larger contribution to their pensions and benefits so they'll have to pay their employer and employee contributions so these are things that we really want to correct by uh, making sure that the language in the agreement properly uh, aligns with the Employment Insurance Act. And, and the top of doesn't exist right now people go on the well, yeah, exactly. It exists for 12 months yeah. because that's what was negotiated previously. Uh, but um, but we would need to look at extending, spreading out whatever we can do to uh, to make it financially feasible for people to take advantage of that final six months. Yeah. Um, again, just from personal experience, the, given that childcare is costing around two thousand dollars a month, this is a huge deal for a lot of the members. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we have time for a couple of more questions, and the next one is about our, our demands at the table uh, with regards to harassment. Uh, a member uh, says that, you know, in your presentation, Rashar, you mentioned that 15% of public servants have reported harassment in the workplace, um, and they want to know where these numbers came from. Uh, they, they're coming from the, the survey that each three to five years ago. The, the, the public service employee survey, which used to be every three years, then every two years. Now it's every year. Okay. Uh, so the statistics from the last survey to this survey were a little wonky because of the change in duration. Uh, and so they didn't report on harassment, but year over year uh, or survey over survey, these statistics have been consistent and have not improved. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for that. Um, on the next question, uh, a member has asked that, how can I help the campaign when I am working in a small office with only two other staff? 
Well, you may have noticed, but um, Pips has finally entered the digital age. Uh, <laughs> um, and so uh, we actually have the ability for people to participate from anywhere uh, virtually in the country. Um, we have a number of campaigns that are, you know, social media, visibility things that you can uh, post pictures on. You can, uh, of course, um, sign the pledge and that will um, uh, put you into a, a queue, if you will, of other actions that you can take from your small office. We're, of course, not expecting uh, you and the two other staff to lead a, uh, a demonstration in front of your building um, unless a whole bunch of us come to town to do it with you, which might happen. Uh, but, um, but there are a lo really a lot of things that you can do to support your colleagues. Something as simple as wearing a button. You see I've got the do better uh, button on. Um, but something as simple as that um, really just shows your solidarity with your bargaining teams, with the Institute, and, and helps us to get a great agreement. Perfect. Well, thanks everyone for your questions. Um, and I know that uh, there will be some of you in this webinar who have already signed the pledge that Debbie talked about, and, uh, and uh, which is fantastic. And as Debbie mentioned earlier, we are going to post the link to the pledge uh, in the chat box. You can click on it right now and add your name to it. As Debbie said, you know, over 5,000 people already have, and I think the, the more strength we can show, uh, the, the, um, uh, the more successful we will be at the negotiation table. Um, and for those who have already signed the pledge, that's not the last step. There's more you can do. Uh, please share the pledge with colleagues online and through social media. Encourage people in your workplace to put up some do better materials around their workspace. Uh, or even better, organize a coffee break um, uh, to bring others up to speed on central bargaining. Uh, there's a second link in the chat that we're going to be posting now uh, that will take you directly to all of our materials available to help you decorate your office or host an event in your workplace. Um, as Debbie said, you know, regardless of whether you have only a couple of uh, members in the uh, in your workplace uh, or or you know. If you, couple of hundred members in your workplace, uh, there's always work that can be done. Uh, and this is where you can, we can build our strength and solidarity. Um, I, I'm told that we do have one uh, question that, and time to answer that one question. So I'm just gonna pose it to Debbie right now. Uh, Debbie, the member asks, why should Treasury Board buy into the Do Better campaign? Uh, great question. In fact, I spend so much of my time pondering over that question and trying to convince the Treasury Board officials and the Minister of the Treasury Board uh, why they should buy into it. Um, you know, really, this government, uh, maybe their fault, uh, maybe not, has put us through three years of uh, a very difficult period with Phoenix. Our members, in fact, all public servants, have remained extremely committed to delivering the critical services to Canadians in spite of this. And I just think that uh, that the government really can do better by us. We can uh, we can get to collective agreements that are fair for public servants, that are also fair for Canadians, uh, to make sure that uh, public servants, um, you know, continue to. Uh, enjoy decent terms and conditions of employment, that they can keep uh, pace with the cost of living, that um, that they, you know, that the public service can be a leader in some of these other areas. And I just think that uh, they should do it without a big fight, that uh, that they can do better and, uh, and we can do better. Perfect, great. Well, with that, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to join us for this webinar. Um, if we weren't able to cover your questions, we will follow up with an email uh, to respond to you. And if you're interested in uh, organizing a Do Better event in your workplace, uh, please send along a message in the chat box now and, we'll, uh, and our staff will be in touch with you to, uh, to facilitate that. Thanks again, everyone. This video will be posted later on and you can share it with your colleagues in case uh, they were not able to join us for the webinar.